everybody, this is Josh with Inktology. Welcome to a new video on tools and the things you need to draw. Or maybe you don't need them all. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the tools that I use and maybe some of the tools that you might wanna use in order to create your art pieces. Uh, not everything is necessary. In fact, most of us who started in school drawing with just a yellow number two pencil, just like this one here, and this little pink eraser at the end and did amazing work. And this is all you really need, that and a piece of paper. But if you want to try to become uh, more diverse in your skills and learn all the different ways of drawing and doing different types of art, I'm going to go through all the tools that I use and some of the tools you can use to become uh, maybe a comic book artist or, you know, design graphic novelist or, you know, any kind of art outside of the painting world. Uh, today. So, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. That helped me out. And uh, yeah, I have a Discord with a very cool crowd of artists from beginner to professional that help each other get to know all the things that they want to know about art and just encouraging each other. It's a non toxic kind of place, so it's really great. Uh, link is down below. And you can also support me on Patreon. But let's get into it. Uh, let's start seeing what you can do with all these cool tools. First off, the number two pencil, right? Uh, this is fantastic for drawing, and sometimes I just use it anyways because the penciling process should always be your first if you want to get everything kind of exactly the way you want. Now, if you start drawing with pen, uh, you can do that, but if you make a mistake, the repercussions of that and consequences could be a little bit more detrimental than using a pencil. So that's why we use the pencils for practice, for sketching, and for building the idea from the mind to the paper. Yeah, which I showed last video. So you should have checked out that one. So I have here a whole bunch of different types of pencils and things I would use for the penciling process. Now, not all of these will be used. I'm just gonna go through them so you know what they do. First off, we have the mechanical pencil. You guys might have seen this or have one in school uh, that may be plastic. This one is a metal one uh, made by Stedler. And it's a very good mechanical pencil. I really enjoy it. The weight is nice. But this is gonna be used for like sketching fine lines, getting it in there, and really being able to, you know, build out your drawing through the process of just having a mechanical pencil. Now, mechanical pencils can be a little harsh if you press too hard. The, the lead is so fine and sharp, sometimes it can dig into your paper. That's where a number two pencil or a 2B or a 2H will actually be softer and kind of dull out over time. Now, these will dull, but they last a lot longer on the sharpness. So, use this wisely, use it well. I like these and they're fantastic for drawing. And you can refill them at any time. The next pencil I'll be talking about is this one here. It's kind of like a mechanical pencil, but it is a uh, thicker and more precise kind of control of your lead as you can extend it out and you have a thicker lead that you can sharpen, which I use just a normal Stedler sandpaper here. And you just go about it by pretty much just sanding it down. And it's not the easiest because you can always press too hard and break the lead. But once you figure it out the technique, um, you can get a really fine tip and really craft your image almost perfectly. Really love this guy. I highly recommend it. Also need a sharpener. You can always use the pencil sharpener. That's fine to use. Definitely try that out. Uh, the next up is going to be my main use pencils. Now these are what I use for the reasons, like I said before, they can dole out easier, which I actually like because the shading process, I can shade a little bit and really you know, get in there and and change it from sharp to soft kind of drawings. I use the 2H and 4H pencil. They are, they're fantastic for any kind of drawing really. They're not as dark as the B, like the 2B, 4B, 8, uh, 5, you know, 6B, 8B, whatever. They're not as dark as that. Those are made for like really dark drawings and getting details, maybe even realism. These here are used for lighter sketches and stuff like that. That's what I use them for at least. And you can use them to create realism, but they'll just have a lighter uh, contrast to the image. So 
Definitely recommend the 2H and the 4H for your sketching. This will really help you out a lot. Uh, next up is this blue pencil. You've probably seen this blue pencil here uh, drawn by some comic book artists. Their whole image will be blue. And then the inking artist will come in and ink on top of that blue. This is because this color blue can be taken away when you scan in the image or, you, or yeah, when you're scanning it in and when it gets out to print or be transferred over to digital, uh, this will disappear. And that's kind of why artists would use this. That, it's also such a light blue. It keeps the inker to be able to not be so uh, distracted with all the dark lines that there could be if you're using a uh, darker pencil, lead pencil. So you don't need this. It's fun to play with. It's a non-photo blue pencil. It's great. There's the other pencils you have is the white. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because not a lot of people draw on white paper, but if you ever draw on a toned piece of paper, uh, like this one, I'm show you here. The white is the opposite of a dark color, right? So in tone paper, you start out at medium color. You start out at the gray, as you would say. And then you can build lights, which is your whites, and you can build your darks, with it, which is your pencils, right? But on white paper, you just go from the brightest color all the way to dark. So if you have a tone piece of paper or something that's not full white, you're gonna to wanna to use white to bring out those highlights. Does that make sense? Hope you understand. And then of course you have your shaders. And these things are of different sizes and different textures. And you've probably seen artists use these. One of the mistakes that a lot of artists do when they have these and they're trying to shade their drawing is that they press too hard and it presses the, the, the lead and the graphite into the paper and creates a shine and shimmer. You're gonna to wanna to use these kind of like soft as possible, just barely tapping on the paper, barely bringing that lead to blend in. I mean, these are blenders, so you just gotta barely do it. You don't wanna to press too hard, uh, and that's a trick. And then you have something like this, where it's like, it looks like one of those things that you use for makeup. Um, and this too is the same way. You wanna lightly just kind of brush in and blend in the lead and get rid of those line marks and everything. So use these uh, tools carefully, and it takes some practice. But uh, if you're looking for realism, it's gonna do great for that kind of stuff. All right, so those are the pencils that I would use and anything I wanna do for the sketching process. Then onto the erasers. I have three types of erasers here. Actually, I have four. Um, the putty one here is the one that I use the most. This is just brilliant because you can actually use it as a fine tip to really pull out little dots of the pencil work if you're being real fine tuning in the realism process, or if you were drawing a big sketch and you want to erase just the top layer of that graphite so you can ink, you roll it like this over the paper and it takes it away. That's great. Um, so that's one. Then I have something more precise, this little eraser here that you can, you can come in and draw these lines out and get in between a lot of your, your erasing stuff, much, much more hard. Because with this one being a fine point, even though it's putty, the putty, when you press hard, it will smash out, but this one will stay fine. It's a good one. Um, I recommend that if you're going to do any kind of rain and you've already shaded in all the colors, you want to pull out the rain with the whites. Now you have just a normal eraser. Now this one here is often looked as pink or some other color, but done as duty, you right? And yeah, I think this is just what most people would use in school and stuff like that. Theirs is usually pink, looks like a piece of gum. And then you have this one here. Now this is really good. This is one of those electronic erasers where the tip spins and because it spins and it's, it's, it's going quite fast, it's able to really take away that lead and just wipe it all off. So if you really need to get that, the lead off uh, perfectly, this is gonna do a fantastic job. So you have four different types of erasers uh, that you wanna use and try. I recommend practicing all of them. Uh, erasers are something that you're gonna always need, so the investment is well worth it. Also, be before I show you the pen, uh, artist tape is very helpful too, especially if you have a board and you're trying to draw upwards or 
you just don't want your paper to move because sometimes if you're using a lot of ink, if you're using uh, paints or anything like that, your paper will buckle, start to wrinkle inwards and then pull and that can be damaging. So what you're gonna wanna do is use artist tape and artist tape is designed to come off, right? So you just take it and you can put it at the edge of, of your paper, however you feel. Now, you have to be careful. Now you have to be careful when you pull it back because when you pull it off the paper, even though it's artist tape, it can still rip the paper. It's not perfect. Uh, you have to pull at an angle and then slowly do it and then you will maintain the paper. Uh, it's good for like different types of paper. Different types of paper work differently with it. So yeah, but it is helpful. Let's move on to the inking process and the pens and stuff that I use for that, okay? Okay, so here I have uh, a drawing I've been working on for the live stream, just this simple drawing. It's, I've been using this brush pen I got from Japan. I believe it is, I don't know the name of it, but an artist by Kim Jong-gi, who uh, RIP uh, is a fantastic artist. And his work was a lot of this pen this brush pen, and you can see it, it is a fine point, it's kind of like a calligraphy pen, kind of like a Chinese brush lettering pen, but I like it because you can squeeze it and, and it pours out the ink here and you can get really dark blacks and you can just really feel the pressure of your pen, you can go from thin to thick, and it's just fun to use because you can even make simple mistakes and find new, um, just new ways of your art banding through this this uh, brush pen so I think if you're a beginning artist this is a very fun thing to play with and practice and build your skills with as it'll teach you how to be uh, sensitive to the paper and and hold your pressure at different ranges you know what I mean so definitely give this a shot uh, and you can find this one on Amazon it's very affordable and then you can go into other pens which you might see artists use, like the Micron pens or Molotow, right? These are, I have tons of these things. They're at every store, a Michaels or, you know, like I said, Amazon or any of your local stores are gonna have this one. This one's, they're made by Sakura. They're Microns, Pigma Microns, and you have different weights of uh, the felt tip, okay? So, this tip here is a felt tip, which you have to be careful because pressing too hard on this will damage your pen, pen and it will no longer be usable. Do not let your friends use this to sign anything or to write anything They are if they're not artists. If they do not do art, don't let them touch it. <laughs> I have never had a single person not destroy my pen, even when I told them, please do not press too hard, these are art pens. And I hand it to them and they, what's the first thing that they do? they push down hard and then that, that, that tip gets crushed inside the pen, never be seen again, okay? So don't let them do it, just don't do it, <laughs> okay? Uh, <laughs> nightmares over it. But let's go over each one, okay? And there, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Let's take this guy and put it down here. I personally like to use a Pilot Razor Point 2 pen. This is a felt pen as well, but it kind of bleeds out a little bit more than most felt pens. A lot of felt pens like the Microns or the Molotow or anything like that won't bleed that much. And that's what they're designed to not bleed. Where a G2 or a normal stationary pen might just keep on flooding out the ink. This one here is a perfect mix between pushing out ink a little bit too much and then kind of spreading and then also being a felt tip. I like it because it allows me to be a little bit more rough with my sketches and it gives this kind of Todd McFarlane vibe. It's a Japanese pen, made in Japan. Um, great. So that's Pilot Razor Point 2, all right? Okay, let's go on to the microns. When you're wanting to do hyper detailed images or get into those fine lines and draw out your image, you can use a 003 pen. Um, these are really fine details. They're beautiful and fantastic for being almost the smallest pin you're gonna get. Then you move up a little bit and go to the 005, which is a little bit bigger. 
It's not uh, much bigger, but it's just bigger. It's, I don't need, we don't, I guess, you can see the distance of it right there. Okay. It's just a little bit thicker. And then we get to the one, which is the one that I would use almost all the time, the zero one. This is my go-to inking pen because from here, the one, I can get much thicker lines and draw over them, or I can go to the zero zero five or zero zero three and create lines this direction. It's the medium platform for me. Some people like the three, zero three, I like the zero one. You can find out which one you like the most, but since I do a lot more detail work, uh, fine detail one is like the perfect medium and feels better for me. Let's move up to a little bit thicker. We'll go, we'll skip the three and go straight to the five. And then there's also an zero eight after this, but the zero five is much thicker as well. This one is gonna be the one that I'm going to shade in some of the blacks that aren't so large on the page that need to be filled in. It fills in like kind of like shadows around the face or in the hair or in the neck, you know, or muscle. Uh, this is a great way to, to shade them and still have fine detail and precision. Now, if I have a bigger section of coloring to do and inking, I'm gonna to move to a brush pen, just like the big pen here. The brush pen is no different. It's just a little bit thinner, okay? And these are, these are really good for filling in a lot bigger areas. And you can always use this, of course, too. Um, which I've, I've actually switched over to this one instead of this one because this here, um, isn't as sh once you dole it out a little bit the tip it will not last very long this one has lasted the entire time because they're hairs instead of a felt tip the felt little tip will um, kind of wear down this one here you also want to you can't really just brush it on like that you want to be flowing upwards where the you're not damaging the tip like you're not pressing down and coming downwards with it not like this but then coming up because the point is a coming to a point so you want to flow that direction right you don't want to follow the point downwards it's going to bend the hairs backwards and then it's going to just mess up your pin so okay so now we went through the felt ones I have moved over I have moved over from Micron to a pin called Molotow right the, the black liners and these are the same exact ideas with felt tips uh, the reason why I have moved over is because another artist recommended them to me and I really enjoyed it. Uh, these pens have a darker black. They don't mess up as much. They don't skip around. Sometimes the Microns can, because their felt tip is a little bit more round, they uh, require a little bit more pressure. And, but it's just, it's, sometimes, they're not bad. They're great. They're great pens. But the Molotow has been a consistent line compared to the Microns. But these Microns are a little bit older, so it could be just that I have, I've been using them for a long time. Now, there are other type of brush pens, like Prismacolor makes one. And the reason why I'm showing you this, even though it's the same as a brush pen here, is because each ink in a different brand is different. So some use darker black inks, some are a little bit lighter, and the consistency of the, the, the fluidity of the ink matters too. So when you're drawing in your image, you may have two brush pins, two different brush pins and you're using it and you'll be like, well, why does this one look kind of gray and this one looks a little bit darker, you know, or the lines just don't feel, they don't, they're not lining up. And that's because the ink is different. Different companies use different ink. That's just how they create their own brand. So test out which ones you like. Um, I think I prefer, like I said before, the ink in here is much nicer than most of the other inks that I use. Now, if you want to get really dark blacks and get into inks, you can use an actual dip pen and ink here. Now these kind of inks are sold online or at your local art store. One of the pieces I've been doing for way too long and haven't finished it is through this. Now the reason why I haven't finished it is because it is a dip pen and dip pins here, um, I can show you, have different tips. You have all these different little tips here to use that you can replace and they have different weights, all right? And the problem is, is that they're, they're beautiful to use and they're very fun to use and it's nice to dip the pen in the ink and then start drawing, 
right? But to clean it and change it, so for example, like I want to go to a fine, I'd have to clean it with a wet rag and then dry it off, pull it off, put the new one on, and then start over. And that process can be a little annoying, daunting, in fact. So it's actually hindered me from finishing some of my pieces because of that process. But if you're looking for a really good precision and control over the ink, these things are fantastic. And, they, and, and they've also, the ink that is being applied is beautiful too. And you're gonna love just seeing your finished work in just full black, really detailed uh, drawing style. So give this a shot, but know the flaws in it are on the fact that, you know, you have to pull these off and pull them back on. And they're not the easy, you know, they're kind of sharp, so, you know. Anyways, but still, still a very good pen. Now let's move on to a thicker pen that is a paintbrush pen, and this is a Uni Posca. And Posca makes a lot of really good markers for like kind of graffiti artists and artists who want to do big picture kind of drawings. They have different sizes, big thick ones, and if you've probably seen like graffiti with big thick brush like, and that's usually they'll use something like this or, um, or an actual brush uh, marker. But yeah, these are really fun because when you're drawing something on a, on a canvas, because I think they're made of, what is it, acrylic? It's different, so it needs time to dry, is what I'm saying. But you have to shake these up, and once you start applying it, it gives you a thick, bold, beautiful paintbrush style image. So if you're looking for something like that, and you do a lot of cartoons or characters or something like bigger, these are gonna be very fun to work with. They do make smaller ones uh, that you can, you can draw with. Okay, so those are the tools that I would use to draw with and then ink with. And all of those don't really need to be used. You don't really have to use, have half of these. This is a little bit too much, right? Um, but I wanted to go through them so that you as the artist can kind of see, okay, that's what you would use it for and that's why you would use these things. Do I need it? Do I not need it? You definitely do not need them. Like I said, a number two pencil and uh, a normal pen from the office will, and a paper will get you exactly where you want to go uh, for the most part, for most things. But if you're looking to use better quality tools, because higher quality tools do help bring a higher quality uh, standard to your art. Now, you can still do it with lower quality things, but you know, it does help make things easier, all right? But it's not about your tools. In the end, it's not about your tools, it's about you as the artist. You as the artist can make anything from anything and that's important for you to know that that number two pencil can create a masterpiece. No different from someone who has the highest grade pencil who doesn't know how to use them, right? Same for pens uh, and paint. So I hope this was helpful for you to just kind of see what tools are necessary to get where you're at. Think about what you want to buy you know, save your money to get them and then take care of your tools because your tools are an extension of you, right? If, you're, if your tools are just laying out everywhere and they're broken and falling apart, uh, maybe you don't care about your, your tools as much and your art will see, your art quality will possibly show that. So I highly recommend you to take care of your art tools and use them with care and love and they will give you that return as well. If you have any tools and pens or pencils that you recommend and you think that you really enjoy, leave them in the comments below and even leave a link to uh, where someone can get them. That would help all of us artists kind of explore the different ones because I know each one of us use something different and that's great. We like to share uh, information here at Inktology and I want to encourage you to share and be an artist that you are because you're a creative and Everything in that great, awesome imagination of yours um, needs to be shown to the world, I think. Um, maybe not everything, but the things that you want to show and draw and create, uh, I'm excited to see it, and I'm sure others are. So if this was helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel and join the Discord. We'd love to have you there and love to see your art and love to chat about all these things. Thank you for joining me, and if you're a creator, go create.